Welcome to Find Your Way Home. I am very excited to have my two new friends on the show, Sister Carista Maria and Sister Mary Claire. Say that 10 times fast. (laughs) And they are delightful. They are two women who are very dear to my heart and very dear to the church because they are hermits. And they pray for all of us. That's why we're still standing. (laughs) So, sisters, I'm going to ask you to share your conversion stories because they're so beautiful. But also, this show is about ultimately how to receive the exponential grace coming into our world because we're living in great times of darkness. And sisters, can you share what kind of times you believe we are living in now? There's depression going on. There's there's doubt, and fear, and a lack of faith, and like I've never seen before. What about yes. you, sister? Yeah, it seems like it's, it's there's like a darkness come over Jerusalem. Right. That's exactly right because Jerus the church is going through Calvary, mm-hmm. and but the very hopeful reality is that the dark is getting darker but the light is getting brighter and the grace is being poured out or as never before and the key for us is just that we're disposing ourselves to the grace that we're Jesus came he said my kingdom is at hand the kingdom of God is at hand and the key is that we enter his kingdom here on earth that we walk on the water like Peter keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus and of course Mary's Immaculate Heart is the new garden into which we must enter, where that fullness of God's kingdom is. And Sister Krista Maria, you said that you were not always a woman who disposed herself to all these graces. Am I right? Not, you are so right. And, and do you mind sharing what you were like and what happened to you? Well, I, I grew up Catholic, and in high school, I kind of I was bored with the church. I kind of likened my faith to ordering a lobster and being served just the shell. It was all about rules and regulations. Mm. Can you relate to that kind of some someone out there? Did it have butter on it or was it just? It was just a shell. I understand. I understand. It's just a shell. But uh, so but then I went to LSU and I, I quit going to church because I no longer had obligation for my parents and so I was into the party scene and looking for love in all the wrong places following college I even I was working at my dad's newspaper for about a year but then I said I need more excitement in life I need purpose what is the purpose in life maybe when I get married or get a good job I'll find fulfillment and so so I decided a year out of college, I'm going to go to Hollywood in hopes of being a movie director because it just sounded seemed like that's where the happening place was, right? <laughs> I I I'll just I have to interject. So you... <laughs> I'm sorry, that's incredible. So you're bored. So the answer is go to Hollywood and become a movie director. That's like, right. How that's... how old are you at, at this point? I was about 23, I guess. So what happened is right before leaving to go to Hollywood, my dad asked me to write one last article for the newspaper who happened to be a couple who had just returned from Medjugorje. Uh And my dad had nothing behind it, but I know God did. And so I interviewed Uh this couple. They are so excited about Mary and God and everything that was going on. So I wrote the article kind of a back burner, like Mary's reportedly appearing halfway across the world to six children, da, da, da. And she said, can I proof the article before it goes in the paper? And that wasn't a very professional, but I wasn't that professional. So I said, so I let her proof it. So she reads the article. She says, you may be talented, but this isn't very good. <laughs> oh, gosh. But um, so... So this lady says it wasn't very good, and she had the nerve to give me this little book on Medjugorje and say, why don't you read this and rewrite it? And so I think she was praying for me because I start reading the book and because I didn't even know if God existed anymore. And if he did, he was way out in the heavens 
maybe when I died, I'd meet him. And when I prayed, it was like to a brick wall. So I had no connection with God. But the first message in this little booklet Mary is saying, I've come to tell the world that God exists and mm-hmm. he is the fullness of life. Mm-hmm. And it was like she was echoing Revelation 3.20, where, where Jesus stands at the door and knocks. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He who opens the door and I will come in and dine with him and he with me. It's like Mary was saying, open your heart to God. He is alive. And Somehow this grace started pouring into my heart as I was reading her messages. And like I said, the lady was probably praying for me as well. But I rewrote the article and it was totally different. I gave it a a huge center spread and it was, you know, very much from the heart. But I still went to Hollywood because I had the car practically packed and I had already applied for a cinematography school. So I'm trying to do this like in a nutshell quickly. But uh, So I'm driving to Hollywood and my mom comes with me to settle in. But God is planting Christians all along the way. And so I'm having a huge conversion all the way to Hollywood. So I get to Hollywood. Long story short, um, God plops me in the middle of the industry. I was ready to leave to come home, but I met someone at a gas station. And um, they talked me into staying and I go to a real estate agent and she knew what I had been interested because I saw you really have to sell your soul to get in or really know someone. So how did you see that, that you'd have to sell your soul to get in? What what gave you that notion? I don't know. There was something once we got to Hollywood. I don't know. I just had there was a feeling that was just unsettling. I actually went to the school. To, to see what the school that I had applied for and even even the person that you know that was in charge there it was so eerie I told my mom I said mom I don't want to go to this school and so we I, I try, decided not to and so but I was so what happened is I'm there for two weeks with my mom riding around looking at things and everything we're going to like a comedy shop and different things and and I'm just feeling a darkness, you know, and by the end of two weeks, I told my mom, I have a stomach ache. I I don't want to stay. And my mom was happy. But so we're leaving L.A. to go back to L.A., Louisiana, and my car breaks down. And so we stop at this station to get it fixed. And and a guy at the station saw that I had a Bible in the back of my car. And he starts talking to me and he found out what I had been interested in. He said, oh, no, I know some people possibly. So um, he talked me into staying there for about a month just to see what was what I could do. A little time of independence. And so mom comes with me to look for an apartment in Burbank. And the woman who was working with me said, oh, I know someone who knows someone who needs someone at the Burbank Studios, which was the home of Warner Brothers and Columbia Pictures. And so she called the lady up and she said, send her right in for an interview. And here I am with jeans on with my mom. And we go into this huge studio lot, the home of Warner Brothers and Columbia Pictures. And in the middle is the publicity office. And and I go for the interview with my mom and she hires me. So all of a sudden I'm surrounded by these famous actors and actresses and major movies going on. I had far from made it, but... It was just a good foot in the door. It's like God was saying, let me just plop you right in the center of the action to show you all the more that this is not where it's at. But so there I am. I'm I'm working there. And when I start going, I start living Mary's messages and I start praying the rosary. I start going to daily mass, but I'm going to Protestant churches for fellowship because there was no Catholics that were excited about Jesus. But but I know this is, it, it gets, but so one day I felt like God had his light on me and he was guiding me where to go. And so one day I'm driving around and there's this Holy Trinity church and it was crowded. Cars were all outside and I felt like I was supposed to go in. I go in and this lady is speaking and whatever she was saying was really touching my heart. And afterwards she said, if you want to be prayed with, come and line up on the side. 
And I wasn't very, I wasn't comfortable with that at all. But I, everyone, every single person in the church lines up on the side, except me. So it was peer pressure (laughs) to line up on the side. And sure enough, she starts praying with people and they'd fall back. And, and, and I was very uncomfortable with that. And I said, (laughs) and I said, oh no, but I was kind of self-conscious about getting out of line. I said, well, I'll see what happens. So uh, when I get up there, I prayed. I said, I just want to know God better and I want to be more selfless. And she prays over me. And sure enough, I felt this light electricity type feeling. And I went back very gently. And for about two weeks after that, I was on cloud nine. And I actually, like scripture came so alive. And I I don't want to be taking this long, though. No, no, I'm interested. Are you Sister Mary Claire? Oh, yeah. I think we're interested. I've heard heard it many times, but I love it every time. But um, so, yeah, scripture came so alive. And actually, I had friends and family that were so excited about the movie industry in Hollywood. They were all coming to visit me. And here I am so excited about Jesus. And and they're wanting to go out in Hollywood. And I'm saying, but Jesus of Nazareth is on TV tonight. (laughs) So anyway, I stay there for five months, but I am just experiencing more of the Holy Spirit. And so I just wanted to move back to Louisiana and I wanted to just go deeper in my relationship with God. And so I moved back and I found out about the Catholic Charismatic Renewal and took a Life in the Spirit seminar to find out what had happened to me when I had been prayed with to to learn more about the Holy Spirit. And I was and I always wanted to get married while growing up and now I was really seeing the beauty of the married life all the more and so then there was a young adult group going to Medjugorje and asked if I wanted to go and all all of a sudden I have this desire to go so I went with them I had the most profound conversion experience or further conversion experience when I returned from Medjugorje it's like God revealed himself to me I think this was our Heavenly Father He revealed himself to me in a way, kind of like I felt like St. Paul when he was knocked off his horse. It was so profound, and I I was just so aware of his love. And I felt maybe like Adam and Eve in the garden a little bit. It's like I was just so aware of his divine will. Was it it a state of being, or what exactly happened uh, for God the Father to reveal himself to you? It was such a revelation of who he was. I said, I can't believe this is who you are. And I said, I can't believe. Well, I had been Catholic all my life, of course, not going to church all the time, but I did not realize he would reveal himself to me in a way that was very personal. How how did he do that? What happened? Tell her about how you said you had like a, God-sized void. Oh well, and how it just... well, it's it's as though it was such a um, profound awareness of God. All of a sudden, right before, like when I had been prayed over and received the Holy Spirit, I said, "I can't believe there's a Holy Spirit." But now, it's like it was even deeper. It's it was as though this um, deep crevice of longing for God that was opened up within me where where I said this I can't believe no one knows this and I and so I wrote an article I I had started working for my dad's paper again and I wrote an article entitled God is alive the best kept secret in the world (laughs) because I said I can't believe he is so real and no one knows this this is just, it's like everyone's walking around and I'm like, y'all, God is alive. It's like I wanted to go to the top of the mountain and I wanted to just cry out to everybody <laughs> like he's, he's alive. Beautiful. And so this amazing experience, like I felt like for two weeks, I was very aware of his will, everything like I, I was driving somewhere one day and I didn't know the direction. So I asked God and, and St. Rayfield, and sure enough, they just let me know where to go. 
And I knew everything so clearly, but that was only for two weeks. And then, and then this, and this love, I didn't need to eat anything. <laughs> I didn't want to eat or need to. And so, but then after about two weeks, it started dwindling. Mm. And so I was crying out to God. I said, Lord, I just want to know you better. And I was going to daily mass, but uh, this friend called me after I said that prayer. And he said, um, I want to take you to St. Clement of Rome. Have you ever been to a perpetual adoration chapel? And I had never heard of a perpetual adoration chapel. I really wasn't familiar with Jesus in the monstrance. So he took me to this chapel in Metairie, St. Clement of Rome. And I went in and I could not believe that Jesus was there. I said, I can't believe, Lord, that you are here, that I can just come any time to be with you. I started going two to four hours a day. Just so to- it wasn't a disbelief. You were saying, this is so good that I can hardly believe this truth that I accept. Is that what you mean? I, yes, yes, yes. It's yes. like it's like God revealed. I said, I, I can't believe this. I had been Catholic all my life. I had been receiving Jesus, going up to communion, more concerned about what I looked like, what cute guys were in the pews, than the fact that I was about to receive Almighty God. And now I go in here and he, I received such a grace that I said, I can't believe that you're here. Mm. And of course, hardly anyone is coming to be with him. So, you know, because like, so as I started going two to four hours a day just to be with him. And as I was doing this, you know, at, at this, well, when I was growing up, the thought of being a sister or a nun was like so boring. It was like if you can't find a husband or are unpopular in school, <laughs> and probably a lot of people would feel that way. And and it was like the thought of being a religious but the bride of Christ, how can you be the bride of someone you can't see or hear or feel? And so, but as I was spending time with Jesus in the Eucharist, I started to see him with my spiritual eyes, Mm. to hear him in the silence of my heart and to feel him in the depths of my soul. And I said, Jesus, I said, I really could be your bride. I said, you are so real. You are so present as I transcend the natural realm because I always longed for intimacy and growing up. That's why I wanted to get married. But as I'm growing in this intimacy with Jesus present among us, and so that's all she wrote. That's you know, that's, It's like finding Jesus in the Eucharist and the golden thread that goes throughout my story is our Heavenly Mother. It's my consecration to her because when I was learning about the Medjugorje messages, one of her messages, she said, abandon yourself totally to me and I will lead you in God's perfect will. And I had no clue what God's will was. So I had, I had been saying to our mother, okay, mother, I give you my life. And sure enough, like the saints say, it's like life in the fast lane to God. When we give our lives to Mary, consecrating ourselves to Mary and And also the whole purpose of consecration is to draw us to an intimacy with the indwelling presence of the Holy Trinity who dwell within us through baptism. And here I was 24 years old and I did not realize this, that when I was baptized, I received the indwelling presence of the Holy Trinity. So when I go to Hollywood, I was seeking purpose in life, kind of like St. Augustine when he says, you were within, and I was all the while seeking outside. That's what I was doing, seeking outside. And Mary was saying, no, no, God is within you, and he's longing for communion. And so Mary, like, she led me to this intimacy with the Holy Spirit, with the Father, with Jesus. And so after that, I said, I cannot believe this. We as Catholics are sitting on a gold mine. We have so much grace. Most Catholics don't realize this. There is so much grace for us. And then I saw this, um, if I can, if I have it here, I saw this, that's John Bosco, the vision, uh, two pillars. 
Well, I saw this not long after all this was happening. And I said, no wonder, no wonder I have these flames of the Eucharist and Mary burning in my heart. Mm. Because uh, John Bosco's uh, vision, he said, uh, there will be chaos in the church. Tranquility will not return until the Holy Father succeeds in anchoring the boat of Peter to the two pillars of devotion to the Eucharist and Mary. And she, he said it would happen in 199 question mark. And, and so I knew this was the time that it was happening, that there was a grace happening in the church to draw people. And of course, Pope St. John Paul II was totally trying to draw people to Jesus in, in the Eucharist and Mary. And so that's where I actually, um, I knew, I said, this, this is my mission you know, to spread devotion to the Eucharist and Mary. And 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 then I started this non this little nonprofit, which is still very little. <laughs> oh what but I mean I did go to I entered religious life, yes. Back in uh ninety, nineteen ninety and so I had been in a religious community for thirteen years and then started living through the encouragement of my spiritual directors and a bishop and my superiors to leave to become more of to follow what was in my heart because I had these charisms burning in my heart and that I always had to put a lid over them because I wasn't able to let them flourish where I was so from there um, just very quickly uh, I had been for a while uh, living trying to grow in my faith and grow in human spiritual integration, which is a key part of my conversion as well, um, that our mother, when I was consecrated to her, she started leading me to dispo dispose my heart for inner healing and and so that I could grow in, in that human spiritual integration. She's leading the into my story. I'm sharing that is because it leads into where she, where she comes into the picture. So, but yes. So, th so that's kind of like it in a in a coconut shell. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sister Mary Claire, uh, this lead-in of inner healing. Can you share your story? Well, you see, Sister Krista Marie and I both were in larger communities, so. Usually this happens, you know, when uh, people decide to become a hermit, usually they've already lived in community life. This is usually the experience because usually you can't get just, just someone off the street and says, I want to be a hermit. You know, it doesn't usually work that way. Um, it's somebody that can can live in community. So a lot of people may say, oh, you're, you're running away from the world. No, it's the opposite. I mean, we lived both of us lived in large communities, both of us lived in community life, and both of us came to know ourselves uh, in a deeper way and, and to come to see ourselves as God sees us. And, and that's, that's very important, you know, to grow in the spiritual life. So sister and I, I was uh, in a little fledgling community up north um, seeking God's will. You I, want to just mention that you had been in Mother Angelica's for almost 30 years? Yeah, I was in Mother Angelica's community right. for almost 30 years. And um, so that was a great blessing for me and a great learning experience uh, living with the holy saintly woman and who taught so much. Um, but so long story short, we, we can't understand why God calls us into a community life and it's even much harder to explain how he may be calling us out, you know, into a different turn. It's the same vocation, but yet it's a different spirituality. So um, it's not a turning away from your vocation because we never did, neither neither one mm -hmm. of us, you know. To so go deeper in it, actually. It's going deeper, yeah. And so... Uh, with the blessing of, of Mother Angelica, too, I, I began my search. And uh, I was in a fledgling community up north. And, uh, and the priest that was there said, Sister, I want you to uh, look up a peace rosary, and I want you to find some meditation. So I happened to find her website. And 
it's, it's providential how God does these things. But I see her website and, and I see these, the peace rosary and the most beautiful mysteries of the rosary that I, that I've ever seen. And I said, who is this woman? And I'm like on the website and I'm, I'm looking her up. I, she's from Louisiana. I'm from Louisiana. Mm-hmm. And I said, who is she? And so I get this teeny little picture of her and I'm like, I need to get a hold of her. I, I need to get a hold of her. So I emailed her and um, I said, I, I'm really drawn to your website and just everything that, that you have on your website is my spirituality. Um, she was probably the only one that saw it of anyone. You know how God, it wasn't, it was so it small. wasn't a real popular website. Yeah. But God had, our mother right. rearranged that, didn't she? Oh, she sure did. And so I, I asked her if she would be willing to come and visit up there up north. And here she is in Louisiana. And she's, and I said, wait, wait, maybe you can come see me when I go to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, because I'm going to go visit my mother and my, my family. And so uh, she said, well, look, we'll do that. So sister came to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I met her for the first time. And immediately, you know how you can just tell a kindred spirit? It's just like she and I just had this kindred spirit. And I just had this knowing that we were going to be together. And I told her that. Um, at the very end, I said, I just don't know how this is going to happen, but I just feel in my heart that God is going to put us together. Our lady is going to put us together, and I don't know how, and I don't know when. We met, and we spoke for like four hours, and sister was being so raw and real with me, and she was speaking to me about inner healing. Now, in my heart, uh, my heart was burning because I was like, I felt like this was a missing piece in my life, you know, because it was... Uh, she always speaks about a human and spiritual integration. And I think when we come from the world, we bring so much with us and so much garbage with us. And, you know, and uh, there's a lot, there's, there's many wounds that we have growing up. You know, we are a product of, of who our parents, how they raise us and, and so forth. And so I had, you know, several wounds and I, I didn't know it at the time to the extent of how deep it was. And so living in a monastery for so long, spending hours before our Eucharistic Lord and learning so much and having wonderful speakers and just learning about my Catholic faith, a lot of it up here. And you wanted to go from here to here. And so uh, for so long, you know, I was longing more and more, you know, I want to go deeper, Lord. I want to go deeper, Lord. I want to go deeper. And how do I get there, Lord? What do I do? And so when she was speaking to me about inner healing, I said, wow, I said, I need to, I need to get together with her, you know? And so it happened that she ended up coming to visit me up north and she stayed for a week. I think it was a week. And we went for this walk and, um, the Lord literally, I I mean, he was really speaking to my heart very strong. And the, the priest that we were with, he said, you talk to her sister and you reel her in. And I said, Father, it doesn't work that way. I said, God has to put it on her heart. She has to have that discernment and feel it strongly in her heart if this is where she belongs. And so it was the complete opposite. God was calling me in a different direction. And so Mm. he put on my heart, speak to her what you have closed off. I was like, okay, Lord, I don't know this woman from from Adam really too much. I, I, I have spoke to her and we really get along. I said, but um, I don't think I could share that part of me. And so we kept walking and I could just feel it really strongly in my heart again. It was not this voice, but this very strong urgency and like a sense that he was telling me, you can trust her. Speak to her what you have closed off. Oh, so mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. So I said, do you mind if we sit down and I just share with you a little bit? And she said, oh, sure. Now, the whole time, her story is like she was seeing in me that God was was opening my heart and that she, she could tell that there was something that I was longing for. And she just sensed it. And, and I um, sensed that at, by that time, I sensed she was meant to share something with me. And yeah. so I was just kind of inside saying... You can do it. You you know, you can share. You can share. Come on, you can do it. And so 
we sat down and I, I just shared very vulner, vulnerably with her and just the things that, you know, I had struggled with in different ways all my life. And as I'm sharing with her, I just begin to just cry, just profusely cry. And I would never do that in front of anybody. And, and, but I did it in front of her and I could, as I was crying, I could, I might cry just talking about it, but, um, I could just feel the floodgates just open my heart. And I was just like, wow, Lord, what are you doing? And as I'm sharing with her, I'm like, I am sharing the most vulnerable part of who I am with her. And I'm, I'm getting to the nitty gritty. And yet I feel so free. And I looked at her and I said, thank you so much for letting me share this with you. And she said something that was so beautiful. She had such a listening heart. And, uh, <laughs> and she said, um, she said, I just want to share with you, sister, that this is a very sacred moment. And this is between you and God and me. And it's, it's a very sacred moment. And uh, as she said that, I just began to cry. And I was just like, I never had anybody share like that with me on that level. And she said, I want to ask you something. And this was the six thousand or sixty thousand dollar question. She said, I want to ask you something, sister. She said, Have you been going you go to adoration every day, right? I said, Oh yes. And she said, You spend time with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament every day, don't you? I said, Yeah. She said, Can I ask you a question? She said, Have you ever been raw and real with him like you are with me right now? Have you shared with him on this level and I said Ye no no I, I was too ashamed you know and, and I would like push that down and say no I shouldn't be feeling this way I'm a nun this is not you know and you we we can do that we can like push ourselves down and say no 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 I'm a good Catholic I shouldn't be feeling this way or I I'm, I'm a nun and I shouldn't be, you know, experiencing uh, this lack of virtue or whatever it is that I'm going through. And um, as she asked me that question, I was like, wow. And she said, you know, God is calling you and me, all of us, to be raw and real with him. And then she said something that really made me laugh and I never he heard it before. She said, did you know that Jesus, that God, he wants to change our dirty diapers. She said he's interested in our poopy scoop. He wants to dive in. He wants to dive into the places that we're most ashamed of. And he he wants us to, to just invite him in to that area that we don't want anyone else to see. And we don't even want him to see. And we don't even realize that we're not wanting him to see until someone opens that door for us and shows us, okay, this, you know, he does want to see this. And it just like opened a whole new horizon for me. Um, I started to take a journal uh, when I would go in front of the Blessed Sacrament and I would write to our Lord and I would be raw and real with him. And I'd say, Jesus, I'm feeling this way again. Jesus, okay, what is going on? Because sister made it uh, clear, she said, when you are feeling um, something inside of you that you're most ashamed of or anything that people, you know, may even disorder, disorder passion, yeah. disorder of any kind, um, it, just imagine our Lord knocking on the door of your heart. And he's saying, will you invite me in? This is exactly where I want to be. I want to go into that which you're most ashamed of. And... I was like, wow, because you're almost ashamed to even write what you're ashamed. You know what I'm saying? And um, so I was like, OK, Lord, this is how I feel right now. And I'm, I'm here in your presence. I'm here before the Blessed Sacrament and I'm feeling this way, Lord. What is going on? And it was then when I asked him, I said, Jesus, I want you to enter in. 
what is it that's going on? And the Lord revealed to me the different things about myself. And he revealed to me that I may be feeling this way, you know, because um, I'm hanging on to things of the past or I'm lonely or I'm afraid or I have low self-esteem, whatever it may be. And so I began to invite him in. And I would say, you know, Lord, I'm the, I'm really sorry. I haven't been raw and real with you in this way. You know, I'm keeping my Catholic faith up here and everything that I've learned. You can learn everything about dogmas and everything else, you know, and, and it's beautiful. We do need to learn our faith and we do need to learn the devotions and everything like that. And they're so beautiful. They're to lead us to Christ. But ultimately, he wants to get to the heart. Ultimately, that's that's where the healing takes place. And this is where God is calling each and every one of you who are listening right now. He's calling you to open your hearts in that way and to be raw and real with him and not to be afraid. And he I makes just, himself so small in that tiny little host, because if he was to reveal himself in all his glory, we wouldn't be able to handle it. Right. So he makes himself this simple little piece of ordinary bread what looks like bread and it's the body of christ and and yeah. just to add to that this is really where our hope lies yeah. as christians because Amen. god is alive and the key is that we're disposing our hearts to him because our hearts are like houses not just with one room but many rooms and every day he's knocking to come deeper and going right along so it's the sacred heart of jesus wants to enter into our hearts and the and it's the key is the immaculate heart of mary mm -hmm. her heart is so disposed every single room and nook and cranny and her heart is disposed to god and so when we're consecrated to her she draws us to dispose our hearts each day like the i know when jesus is knocking when i feel insecure about something fearful anxious uh discouraged anything that I that I listen because I know he's not in the room that I'm in and so I invite him in in that divine mercy picture that you see he comes in and he brings redeeming graces and you, we often see as Catholics those little holy cards where you see Jesus knocking at the door and there's no doorknob because he's such a gentleman he wants us to open the door from inside of our hearts. He wants us to invite him in. He's such a gentleman, and his love is so great. He would never force himself. And ideally, this is what Catholic parishes should be, that we can support one another and love one another and facilitate one another, inviting Jesus more deeply in, you know, right. so that we don't all have to have masks on and seem to have it all together in front of everyone but but we don't have that trust level at this point but you know it's something that is gradually happening within the church in different right. pockets and an example just real quick uh christine is one time sister and i were invited to give a a, a short talk to the rcia group and sister and i were just sharing sort of like this and just from our hearts and one of the women raised her hand and she said wow she says, I, there's something so different in the way that you all are talking to us. They said, we always feel like we're being talked at rather than listened to and that you're really caring for our soul and wanting to learn from us as well and inviting us to enter in with you rather than just speaking at us. And not judging right. one another but trying to have a listening heart with one another, right. you know, and that's the difference. Like people that are real, that have gone into a major disorder, sexual disorders of different kinds, they might be coming out and saying, Oh, I just need to be real and true who I am. They come out and they get guidance from the deceptive guy about the truth. And it's not true. But if they could come out with people, you know, say, like, I'm really struggling with this and then speak the truth of Christ in it, but invite Jesus in, then he states that deep longing we have. There's a legitimate longing that people have when they fall into disorder, but they seek to sate it with something finite rather than 
disposing that longing to the infinite love and healing grace of God and their dignity and identity in Christ rather than in what the world thinks of them and, and other people, you know. Sisters, uh, that was beautiful and so much to absorb. I think what we want to do to close is to invite you all who have heard their testimonies to do the same, to come before our Eucharistic Lord. And hopefully there's adoration near you. If not, go into a church and sit in front of the tabernacle. He's there. Mm -hmm. And to do what the sisters have said, to be raw, real, (laughs) honest. If you like to journal, journal. If you like to just talk in your head to God, tell him exactly what's going on. The funny thing about us human beings is he he knows anyway, remember? <laughs> you're not revealing anything new to him, but you're only opening it up so he can transform it. So, sisters, would you be so kind as to say a closing prayer for the listeners? Sure. Thanks, Joel. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this day and for the many gifts you've given to us that we're not even aware of. We thank you for Jesus and the most blessed sacrament. We thank you for sending him to this earth to die for our sins and for him to have that great love and that intimacy with each and every heart as if they were the only person that existed to him. That's how much he loves each and every one of us. We thank you, Father, for for the Holy Spirit, the sanctifier. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to give us wisdom and knowledge and help us to see ourselves as God sees us. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you sanctify our hearts, make us saints. This is God's desire. All of us are called to be saints. All of us are called to, to the heights of holiness that God has destined for us. We thank you, Father, also for giving us our Heavenly Mother, such a sweet mother, gentle mother, loving mother, a mother who cares for her children in such a beautiful, tender way. We thank you, Mother, for your presence with us even now. And we pray, remember, O Most Most Gracious Virgin Virgin Mary, Mary, that that never never was it known that that anyone anyone who fled to thy protection protection, implored thy thy help or sought sought thy intercession, intercession, was left unaided, inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Thank you so much, sisters. That was so very, very beautiful. Thank you, Praise God. Christine. Thank you yeah. for having us. Thank you for having we're, us. We're yes. so blessed. We're so blessed to have met you. We feel, yes. like, we feel like kindred spirits with yes, you. Yes, because well, we so. we we've, we've seen you um, in different videos and so forth. And I told Sister when I first well we said we it together said it, really. Yes. We said, oh wow, she she's she's kindred, a kindred spirit. Kindred spirit. <laughs> we we just felt your heart. Oh and, yes. Uh, and your son too. Whenever Christian spoke, we felt his heart too. So. And we felt exactly the same way, exactly the same way. And uh, for all of you who are viewing, uh, we hope that you entered into a bit of intimacy with our Lord in seeing the hearts and the stories of these beautiful, beautiful sisters. And from all of us, we pray that you may find your way home. Amen. Amen.